What's poppin' y'all? It's your girl Malia, and welcome to the first ever episode of Young and Opinionated. This generation is opinionated. When I say this generation, I say me. I've always wanted to be on a talk show. I've always wanted to have my own talk show. And guess what the modern day talk show is? A podcast. I can do it from my bed. I can share my opinions, my thoughts, my worries, my concerns, all of it with y'all. And I really want to create a safe place because I feel like sometimes the internet isn't safe anymore. I feel like everyone's tippy-toeing around subjects. They're scared to speak and say what they're actually passionate about because of other people's opinions on them. And that stops a lot of people from saying a lot of things. And we're all growing. We're all evolving. We all make mistakes. We all need to learn how to overcome those mistakes and move on. But the internet doesn't really give us a place to do that. I want this space right here between me and you to be like that. You can have your opinion. I can have my opinion. We're able to talk and grow. I'm going to learn things from you. You're going to learn things from me. My opinions are never concrete. I'm always changing my mind. I'm always evolving constantly. And I don't want you to hold me to it. Oh, well, Malia, 18 weeks ago, you said this sentence. I might have encountered a life event or a person that brought me more knowledge to the subject and my opinion changed. So I just want to let you know I'm never concrete locked in about something, but I do want to have a safe place to talk about what I'm feeling and what I'm feeling in that moment. And that's what we're going to have right here. Welcome to the bed. All right, so... (laughs) I do like having controversial conversations in general. I love sparking something in somebody and making them express themselves and that's just what I feel like I learn the most from people. So I definitely want to get into some controversial topics. We will touch base on a lot of things up in here, but I'm going to start us off with just some pop culture current events, you might say, because that's what we're all scrolling all day looking at is what's happening in the now so let's see what's happening right now i don't think you can say the word pop culture or current event or pop culture without talking about the kardashians now i've been obsessed i am a binge watcher i never miss an episode i've seen every episode for the last 20 seasons of keeping up and i've seen the last two seasons so thus far of the kardashians on hulu and i'm going to say i'm i'm waiting for a little bit more you know i've loved everything so far like i just like seeing the backside of what happens in people's lives Uh, I think you see that on people's stories on Instagram. You're like, oh, okay, I remember them posting pictures of the wedding, or it normally happens like this. You'll be like, oh, so-and-so's at a wedding. Look how fun they're having. I love their outfit. Look at them getting lit, all this stuff. And then you get to see their beautiful picture that gets posted on the feed. I like seeing that backstory. And that's what I feel like the Kardashians have done a really good job of, is opening up and showing us what happens behind their main events that they have that are already so interesting. But whatever they've done, they've done it great because they've kept the show rolling that long and kept our attention for that long. And even if you say you're not a Kardashian lover or fan, whatever you want to call it, supporter, um, you know their story. You know you know which one's married to which one. You know who Northwest is. You know, like, you know. So they're very relevant. And I just wanted to touch on season two of the Kardashians. It looks like they're kind of holding back a bit. They're not really letting us fully in. And I feel like that's where we're starting to see people say, oh, well, okay, this is getting boring. And I think it's because this world that we live in where so many other opinions bother us that we shelter ourselves more and more and we don't let people in anymore. And I think that's what made social media a thing. Like seeing what other people were doing, seeing their personality, all this stuff. And as we're getting more and more filtered versions of that and conservative versions of that, I feel like we're we're losing it a little bit. And that's why I try to stay pretty genuine and authentic with what's going on in my life because I choose to share it. But I don't know. I just, that's the content I like watching. So 
I'm kind of missing it a little bit here. Um, but I did want to talk about the fact that they sometimes, not sometimes, you know, we're all going to make mistakes, we're all going to do things. But I think they put, how do I say this? I think sometimes they forget how much influence they have and how many eyes are on them when they do certain things. Um, in one of the episodes I saw recently of the Kardashians, Kim's talking about losing 10 pounds to fit into a dress. I couldn't imagine the pressure on her to feel the need to lose 10 pounds to fit in a dress, but I think you shouldn't make your body fit something. I think you should make the clothes fit your body by buying the clothes that are in the right size, wearing things that are in the right size, because if you're healthy, then your size is fine. You know, like if you feel good, if you're smiling when you look in the mirror, if you're, whatever your health goals are, whatever that is, if you're happy with that, why are we forcing ourselves to lose weight, to fit in a dress, to fit in anything? And even if you're going to do that, I think that's not something we need to see on the show where a million little girl's eyes are who are going to see their favorite dress at the prom store and it's a size zero and they're a size four, they're a size six, they're a size two. And now they're thinking, well, this is the dress I really want to fit into. I'm going to lose weight to fit into it, even though my body's beautiful and perfect the way it is. I don't know. I just didn't think that was the best role model fit for us on the show so I was kind of disappointed in moments like that but again I'm not going to be like oh they're done I think it's all learning and even if they're not open to learning right in this moment you know you look back on things a few years ago and you're like how did I not think about that or you know I just that's something I noticed when I watched it And then back to the topic of us not really showing our genuine, authentic selves anymore for the people that do want to share. Um, I blame it on the, the mouths behind the keyboards, really, because a lot of the things that are said on the internet would never be said to a face. So you get really bold. And it's the people sometimes who don't even... Content creating isn't their thing, so they're not out here making content, but they have opinions, which... They're allowed to have opinions. They're entitled to their opinions. But if you don't have anything nice to say, maybe you don't say it. And especially if you see someone doing something that they're happy in, it's like, okay. Um, Kylie Jenner went on the Hailey Bieber, I don't know what it's called, but the bathroom like talk. And um, she was talking about, well, she stopped showing everybody her genuine, authentic self because when they had things to say about her genuine, authentic self, it hurt a little deeper because they actually were getting to see it. If she puts on a persona and then someone says, oh, her personality's trash, ha ha, you thought that was my persona. That's what I let you see. But then if you're just being yourself and someone says your personality's trash, you're like, I might need to work on that. And then you're just like over focusing on yourself and you don't, you know, that's when you start filtering yourself. And I just thought that was wild that she said that because I had been seeing that and feeling that on the internet. I've seen YouTubers who started with no makeup, crazy hair, just talking to the camera, or whatever, to now that every time they come on camera, they're very put together. And maybe that's a change they wanted to make in themselves but they're very put together, they're very thought out with what they say instead of just being wild and crazy the way they used to be. And I'm like, we've filtered ourselves, you know? Like, and I just think it's because of some of the hateful words that get spread on the internet. This cancel culture is actually ridiculous. Cyberbullying is like an all-time high and it's just terrible because we are given these platforms to be ourselves and then people have endless opinions. <laughs> Y'all, I'm sorry about that. That was, we had some technical difficulties there. Um, that was something that scared me about wanting to start this. I am quick to make excuses on things. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know how I'd record it or how do you edit it or how do you get it uploaded? And I still don't know the answers to those questions. I am just going at it. I'm like, well, I can't edit anything if I don't record it. So I'm recording it. Am I recording it right? I have no idea. 
I'm just going with it. The next step will be my research on editing it. I've edited YouTube videos before, but I've never edited a TikTok. <clears throat> I've edited YouTube videos before, but I've never edited sound and gotten it up on Spotify, and that's the goal. So I don't know. We're going to see how this goes, but there is going to be little steps and challenges in the road for us. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, I've had to change the position of the camera because it keeps not recording, like stops recording on me and I can't see if it stops recording if it's the other way. So this is a part of the learning experience. We can only go up from here, right? But I think what I was talking about was the attention span of viewers and everything. And it's going down and you have to catch people's attention really fast by doing something entertaining or teaching somebody something, or you just have you have to have content with substance. Substance. And that's the opposite of content that I make. My content is just a girl with a phone. It's very much video diary type thing, but I also think that's nice to build a bond and a um, relationship with the person you're watching and being able to learn more about them. And I think that what people that's what the vibe i give people they always say i'm their comfort tiktoker or it feels like we're on facetime and like that's what i want us to feel that's the environment i want us to have so like that makes me happy i don't feel like i have to be saying something so specific i don't feel like i have to be doing and showing something sometimes i can just be like this was a thought on my brain and it's accepted you know and i appreciate that i do feel like with the world of content creator and influencer becoming a dream job, now there being levels to it, you don't have to be a major influencer. There is a whole space and business for micro influencers now, which I think is amazing. Raise the roof. Um, but I do feel like the space is, gr it's growing, but it's also starting to get crowded. It's becoming watered down I, what is it called you know what i'm trying to say though and the more people that are in the space doing the same thing there's only going to be a few that stand out and i know that and i just have my fingers crossed if it works out for me it works out for me if it doesn't it doesn't but i think it's great that people aren't relying on their eight pretty photos on instagram to keep them relevant and everything they're having to explore new platforms. People that wanted to be, that were so serious on Instagram and would never come on without a filter or makeup are getting on TikTok and they're no milter, no milter, no filter, no blurred skin, just raw, real, and we're getting to see the funny side of them or their personality where all we knew was their bikini bod on Instagram. I really like that everyone's having to branch out and people are branching out in different ways. People are creating businesses empires and we watched it first with who with the kardashians we watched it first there and it's only evolved into bigger we saw kim start kkw beauty and her perfumes and everything it's like okay this girl's a, what what is her talent oh but if she tells you guys to go buy something, you go and buy it. So how about she just make that something and then you buy it from her and then she gets to do her own advertising for free. She's her own marketing. Kylie Jenner blew up a lip kit because everyone wanted to know what was on her lips and now that's her empire. I think that's really cool that you're seeing more and more influencers at all stages, at all successes starting to do that. Um, because there's really enough space for everybody, there really is. Um, just because one person is succeeding doesn't mean another one can't in the same space. Um, I think, again, perfect um, perfect comparison would be Hailey Bieber and Kylie. Kylie has Kylie skin. I think Kim has Kim skin now. Uh, Hailey Bieber has Road. It's like, they all of their people that are watching them that are purchasing from them are so different that it's fine for both all three of them to be in the space because they're still going to have their people get their stuff and then that person's people is going to get their stuff and so on and so forth but i think it's really cool that you're now getting to see people whatever they're passionate passionate about bring it to a tangible thing that's something that's really cool 
and Instagram and all these platforms is an advertising platform and that's why businesses pay influencers to make their product look good because the influencer has this following that trusts them. So hopefully you're an influencer who's not just taking on any deal (laughs) and you're taking on the ones that matter, the ones that you actually believe in, but it's giving you a space to tell people and you make a little money the company makes a little money and the people that are watching you and loving your lip routine get to see what you're actually using so that's i think it's beneficial to all parties i don't i don't really understand how some people don't have social media like i i guess i get it it's very healthy of you to be so detached but that's exactly what you are is you're detached you don't like i don't remember all my friends birthdays i don't remember all their birthdays i wait for it on instagram like the top five people in my life i remember your birthday everybody else i'm waiting for you to post about it (laughs) and then i'm like oh happy birthday and you know i don't know people are getting married people are having kids and that's how we're staying up to date if you think about social media on that scale if you're looking for news You can't always get 100% accurate news, but you do get a little feel for what's going on in the world. You're seeing these movements be taken on and you're seeing like what, how much power they have through social media. Then watching the actual news doesn't always show everything, but being on social media, you get to see all the different sides to all these different things. I don't know. I just couldn't imagine not having social platforms. I do think about limiting myself sometimes. I'm like, what? Your screen time? is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous but at the same time this is a job that i'm trying to create for myself so it's I'm, i call it research but i am taking in a lot of media in a day which can be overwhelming but due to technical difficulties and everything i am going to stop us there There is going to be a lot more to come and just like a little inside scoop, I do have some guests that I want to bring on um, and deep dive into their life. I have tons and tons of topics. I guess I'll get into this real quick. So some of the backstory for me really wanting to start this podcast was I was asked the question of what are your, what is your dream job? doesn't matter what it is, you get paid a very livable salary, what would you want to do? And I was like, I want to taste test food, be a food critic, and I want to be a talk show host. I couldn't pick one, I never can pick one. And so I decided to do both at the same time. And that's when I started making my TikTok a lot more about food and I was constantly eating. And when I was eating, I was talking about topics. Topics I cared about, controversial topics, fun topics, silly topics, whatever, I was just talking. And I was combining the two. And when I was asked what you wanted to do, and I thought about those, the the person asked me, they were like, well, what are you doing to get yourself to that point? And I'm like, hmm, I guess that's what I need to change. What am I doing to get me to this end goal of me wanting to be a foodie or a talk show host? I need to build my resume if those are the goals, you know? So this this is what we came to. This is my talk show. Welcome to Young and Opinionated, the Malia show. (laughs) But yeah, I just wanted to show you what kind of brought me here. Um, A month and a half ago, a month ago, I was sitting at a nine to five office desk and going into it, it felt like everything I ever wanted, everything I was ever supposed to do. I went to high school, right out of high school, went to college, finished college in four years and locked down that nine to five job in the marketing world. And I was like, is this what I worked for? Is this what I really want to do forever? This is not what I want to do forever. And I was like, well, what do you want to do forever? And even if it's not forever, I'm going to have a good, a damn good time doing whatever it is. I'm 22 years old. This is the time to take those risks. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have crazy bills waiting for me to pay. I can kind of take that risk and just try to go after something super hard and on target. If I can spend eight hours a day building up somebody else's company, let me spend eight hours a day building up me and see what I become. I wanna water my seed. 
And so that's what this whole journey and process has been. The last month I have worked really hard at what I want to do, but I've also let the opinions that used to hold me back out the door. I don't care. I tell myself I don't care. There are certain things I definitely care about. Everyone's self-conscious, but I used to be like, oh, that's embarrassing. I'm not going to do that. Like, I really want to do a food review in this restaurant, but it's too fancy. I'm not going to do it. I, I did it. Now I do it. Now I do it because nobody cares. They might see you and be like, oh, look at that little girl making TikToks. That's the only thing they're going to say. They're not going to say nothing else. But it's stopping me and it's holding me back from doing something I want to do. So I just started doing things and that's what we're doing. I bought a mic, I bought headphones, and I put my lamp in my face. I hope you're buckled in because this is going to be a journey. Um, I'll give you a little snippet about what we're going to talk about next week. I really want to get into bad habits and things that I've worked on, overcame. I want to talk to you about some of like my healing journey and coping mechanisms and traumas um goals mental health i really want to deep dive into there i also want to do like a write-in segment where you guys can write in problems questions you have and that can be a whole segment on here i do want you guys to get to know me on a new level before i bring in other people just so you can always see where i'm coming from know my backstory know where i'm at in my journey and then i have some really fun guests that i plan on having on here that i think you guys would really like and again, with those controversial topics, um, sometimes it's fun to talk about your opinions when no one else can talk back to you because you get to just say whatever you want. But I think it's really interesting when you get to talk to somebody and the banter back and forth and learning from each other. And like I said before, I love that. I live for it. So I can't wait to bring it on here. But I definitely want you guys to get to know me and learn more about me right now and so that we can go on this journey together and there's a full understanding. I don't know. I just might sound conceited. I want this show to be about me. But again, I do want you guys to write in, and I think that'd be a really fun segment. I'm not a therapist. Nothing I say really means anything. It's just, this is my video diary. I'll see you guys next week on Young and Opinionated. Out! If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on all my social platforms, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, guys!